Hi, I'm Dr. Manal Patnaik. I'm a senior associate consultant with the Division of Hematology with a special interest in coagulation and thrombosis. And I'm Dr. Wilson Gonsalves, and I'm a hematology fellow uh, at the Division of Hematology at the Mayo Clinic Rochester. We're here today to introduce to you our uh, article called The Newer Oral Anticoagulants in Clinical Practice. Uh, this is soon to be published in the Mayo Clinic Proceedings and uh, details newer drugs that have recently been approved as alternatives to warfarin. Warfarin is an anticoagulant that has been around for many years and has a very strong link with the Midwest. In 1933, a farmer in Deer Park, Wisconsin uh, took his cattle to the University of Wisconsin-Madison because they were bleeding after having eaten, eaten a fermented clover uh, Hey, uh, Dr. Link was a biochemist uh, who encountered uh, this uh, event and he advised against feeding the cattle the clover leaf hay and started doing research on the blood that was brought from these bleeding cattle. Six years later, he crystallized uh, an agent called dicumarol, which uh, he felt was responsible uh, for the blood thinning effects from the clover hay that had fermented. In 1941, Dr. Hugh Butt, a very prominent gastroenterologist at the Mayo Clinic, first asked for dicumarol and used it in the post-operative setting to prevent uh, venous thromboembolism. Uh, Dr. Charles Owen, who joined uh, the Mayo Clinic subsequent to that and worked extensively on uh, this agent and its properties. Dr. Link's group actually uh, furthered their research on dicumarol and uh, marketed it as a, as a very potent uh, rat poison, rodenticide. Uh, while the group at Mayo Clinic and other researchers also looked into its properties as an anticoagulant. Uh, the word warfarin, uh, the first four letters, W-A-R-F, stands for the Wisconsin Alumni Research Foundation, paying tribute to the strong Midwestern links of this drug Warfarin has been used for many years and uh, all physicians are familiar with some of its advantages and pitfalls. Uh, those of you who are familiar with warfarin understand that it has numerous food and drug interactions. Uh, patients are often restricted in uh, their intake of green leafy vegetables including salads and there is this constant need for going in and getting uh, your blood checked for the international normalized ratio or INR. Uh, it's also difficult to maintain people's INR in the therapeutic range and this has led to breakthrough episodes of clotting. Uh, the advantages of warfarin, of course, is you know the long-term safety has been well established and uh, vitamin K and fresh frozen plasma are some of the antidotes that are time tested. Over the last few years, uh, we have seen three new oral anticoagulants uh, that have been approved as alternatives uh, to warfarin. Uh, they play a very important role in our therapeutic armament. These drugs are dabigotrim, rivaroxaban, and apixaban. Of these three drugs that are discussed in our paper, dabigotrim was the first drug to be clinically available in the U.S. It is FDA approved at this time for the prevention of stroke and systemic embolism in patients with a history of non valvular atrial fibrillation. Uh, this drug uh, has several uh, advances over warfarin. One, it has great oral bioavailability. Number two, it has limited food and drug interactions. And three, it does not uh, require continuous anticoagulant monitoring. Now, one of the disadvantages is that it does, uh, it does not have a specific antidote to reverse its anticoagulant effect. Now, rivaroxaban, there then, was, was the second uh, oral anticoagulant available in the U.S. and was the first drug to be shown to uh, inhibit uh, the coagulation factor 10A. Now, this drug is FDA approved for, one, the prevention uh, of stroke in non-valvular atrial fibrillation, two, for the post-operative uh, post uh, thromboprophylaxis in patients undergoing elective knee and hip surgeries, and three, for the acute treatment of both DVTs and pulmonary embolisms. Now, this drug, uh, too, has the distinct advantages of having excellent bio-oral availability, uh, having limited drug and food interactions, and, uh, and also not requiring uh, 
continuous anticoagulant monitoring. Now, however, this drug too does not have, have a specific antidote. However, one of the advantages it does uh, give is that it's once a day dosing does provide some advantage to those patients who may have some issues in terms of medication compliance. Now the third drug and the final drug we discussed in our paper is apixaban and this was the latest drug to be approved. Now this drug just like rivaraxaban is also uh, a direct factor 10A inhibitor. Uh, this drug is currently FDA approved for the prevention of stroke and atrial fibrillation, in particular non-valvular non-valvular atrial fibrillation. Once again, it has an excellent oral bioavailability, has limited drug and food interactions, and uh, also does not require continuous monitoring. Now, our paper goes uh, in depth and provides a detailed review on how to use these novel oral anticoagulants in the perioperative setting, how to transition them from one anticoagulant to another, what salient clinical features you may use to decide which anticoagulant to use, uh, and finally, how to also deal with some of the bleeding complications. Now, the advent of these new oral anticoagulants have been a great advancement in the field of medicine. However, it should be noted that warfarin at this time still remains the most time-tested and the most effective anticoagulant of choice in patients who are already on warfarin and who have uh, stable therapeutic INRs while on warfarin with good medication compliance. Moreover, warfarin continues to remain the standard of care in those patients with a valvular atrial fibrillation as well as those patients with mechanical heart valves. In patients who have severe hepatic dysfunction or severe renal dysfunction, the new oral anticoagulants should be used with caution. At the end, we hope that this paper will provide the practicing clinician with all the points needed to uh, uh, manage his patients uh, and all the salient features of anticoagulation with, with these drugs. Thank you. We hope you benefited from this presentation based on the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you're interested in more information about Mayo Clinic Proceedings, visit our website at www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find additional videos on our YouTube channel, and you can follow us on Twitter. For more information on healthcare at Mayo Clinic, please visit www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.